Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be reviewing a solar power generator by MonstarPowers.com. That's Monstar, not Monster. Um, so they reached out to me and wanted me to review one of their solar power generators. Uh, I said, sure, I've never heard of this particular company before, but I agreed to do the review, so they sent me a unit out. And what we're going to do today is just kind of go over the specs, put it through a bunch of tests, and at the end of those tests, I will give you my pros and cons and overall opinion of this unit. If you end up being interested, there's a link down below that'll save you $110 off this unit um, if you end up being interested. So what we're going to be basically looking at here is this is a solar power generator. It is has a 1500 watt pure sine wave continuous inverter. It has 1620 watt hours of lithium ion batteries inside. And so that's that's a pretty decent amount of power for the size of this unit. Um, pretty much a lot of other units in this size and weight class um, are you gonna use lithium iron phosphate cells, which give you a lot more cycles, um, but they're probably gonna be around a thousand watt hours of power inside. So using lithium ion cells, they, they have a higher power density, so they have a lot more power packed into the same size. However, your cycle rate is gonna be lower. So with lithium ion, lithium ion cells, you're gonna get 500 to 800 cycles out of the sky. And that's a lot of power outages. That's a lot of camping trips and so on. But with lithium iron phosphate cells, uh, you can get into the thousands of cycles. And so I would prefer lithium iron phosphate cells, but considering the, the price point and how much power you have built into this guy, um, it's still very interesting. So we're gonna get into that 1620 watt hours of power inside this guy. And um, I'm gonna test out the inverter to see if we can really push it over the top and maintain 1500 watts throughout the entire uh, battery cycle. So we're gonna jump out there and I'm gonna show you some of the, uh, the ports and the different uh, things that you can run off this guy and then we're gonna jump right into testing. So why don't we jump out there right now? Okay, let's dive right into this. This is a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and it can maintain 1500 watts continuously throughout the entire um, energy discharge of the battery. So as long as it has power, it will produce that 1500 watt continuous, uh, which is great. And I'll test that here in a little bit and show you guys what I mean. This is your input for charging the device. It does come with a 200 watt wall charger. that can be plugged in here, or you can also plug in your car adapter uh, with a cigarette lighter charger there as well. This is for your solar input. You can use both of these simultaneously as long as your power does not exceed 200 watts. That is the maximum charging rate uh, for either one of these is 200 watts. And the wall charger itself is 200 watts, which is great. Now you do have your USB connections here with the type C, three USBs, and this one is a quick charger right here, fast charging USB port. You're also gonna have a lighter socket port right there, and two 12 volt DC output ports up top as well. Now to operate the device, you basically just turn on the power button, and then whichever section you wanna use, you would activate that corresponding button and it will indicate it on the display. So for the inverter, you just hold down the AC. That's gonna turn on for us. And if you wanted to use the USBs, you would click that on. And if you wanted to use the cigarette lighter adapter or these two smaller 12 volt outputs, you would turn that on. So you can see how everything turns on and off to indicate that it is indeed activated and running, uh, which is great. Now this obviously has a lot of ways to plug in a lot of different devices into it. I mean, we have three plugs here, four USBs, cigarette lighter adapter, and two out port, two uh, ports right here with 12 volt DC out. Now, if you wanted to expand on any of that, keep in mind that you can use adapters and splitters to create more of any of these plugs. And with 1500 watts of continuous power, you can plug in a lot of devices. So that's just something to keep in mind if you wanna plug more things in. Um, you can always just use a surge protector or a splitter, which is great. So that can give you as many plugs as you really want. Uh, why don't we dive into some of the capabilities of this unit and I'm gonna test it to see if I can really push that inverter over the top to make sure that it really holds up and does what it says it's gonna do. So what we have going on here is two space heaters. We're fully charged. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this guy and we're gonna turn on the inverter. And I'm gonna turn on the 1500 watt space heater on low on the right. You can see our display right there that I have rigged up on top through my little special rig. And I'm gonna reset that. It's gonna show us wattage and watt hours. We're gonna turn on the main heater on low. 
and that's going to take us up to about a thousand watts. You can see that on the middle left there, uh, 1,040 watts. Now we're going to turn on the smaller space heater on low, and that takes us all the way up to about 1,800 watts, almost 1,900 there for a second. And this is kind of sped up, so this is for minutes here. It's going to settle at about uh, 1,750 watts. Uh, so we'll just call it 1800 watts is what we're running out here, which is really impressive. Now I'm going to take a little temperature reading just to show that the heaters are indeed working. You can see the coils are about 200 degrees on each one of these heaters. And now we're just going to let a time lapse run and see where we end up. It does this through the entire battery cycle over a course of about 45 minutes. And what we end up with for our watt hours used is about... 140 on the meter there, so that's 1,400 watt hours. And um, you can see here it's at 1.25, but it's actually gonna have some battery power left. And I'm actually gonna run a little inverter to, to get the rest of that out. It doesn't have enough battery power to keep running at 1,800 watts. But if I'm running a small load like 50 watts, I can take the rest of the energy out of that battery and we can add that up. So what we end up with is about 100, uh, 1,400 watt hours. Um, so that's just shy of 250 watt hours of the 1,650 that they said it would produce. But I'm going to chalk that up to really pushing the battery really, really hard at 1800 watts for 45 minutes. And also you're going to have a little bit of power loss through the inverter. So I'm going to call that a win for sure. Now we're going to go ahead and hook it up to a washer and run it through some cycles and see if we can do some laundry with this guy off the washing machine. So let's jump out there right now. Okay, so I've already got some clothes in the laundry in the washing machine. We've got a little time lapse camera set up. We got some clothes in there. We are hooked up with the only plug right here to the washing machine going straight in to our Monstar power inverter here. So we're going to turn that guy on. Actually, before I do that, you can see there's no power. Okay. Turn that on. Turn on the inverter. And now we should have power. Perfect. Now we've already got everything ready to go, so we're just going to set this up to do a cycle. So we're going to start the time lapse here on the washing machine. We actually get through three different loads, and we're still well above 50%, which I thought was very impressive. This will not work on an electric dryer because they run off 240 volts, so there's no way. Maybe a gas-powered dryer uh, that's getting its heat from the propane is just running the drum. But anyway, we, we got through all three loads of laundry here, and we're still above 50%. I think that's very impressive. I also use this to run my big double door LG refrigerator, turned on the power, turned on the pure sine wave inverter there, hooked it up with an extension cord. Now you can see my refrigerator does indeed have power and you can also get you know, use the ice maker, get water. They claim on the website that it'll last 12 hours and I set up a time lapse camera. I'm sorry that that footage got corrupted, but I would say it definitely went overnight and I would say it lasted about 13 to 14 hours, definitely over 12. So that's a total win. Okay, so I just wanted to go over this real quick with you. Um, basically, I've got it hooked up. Just one plug that goes to this really big power strip. So you got tons of plugs in there and USB ports galore down here. Basically powering, it's going to be powering my PS4. Uh, there's a Nintendo Switch in there. Also this uh, really big amplifier for my Bose 91 speakers. A equalizer, my uh, receiver there. Also have my internet router and 65, I think it's a 60 inch flat screen TV. And that also has a fire stick connected to the back of that. And also this little clock that's on the wall here. It's also powering that guy. And also two subwoofers down below for when I start using uh, some music later. I'm gonna play some games. I'm gonna fire up the PS4 and uh, use the surround sound speakers and watch TV all night and it's about 4.45, so we'll see how that goes. We'll watch some movies and play games, and I will let you know how long this powers my entire entertainment center, including my internet, surround sound, TV, uh, games, and all that good stuff. So stay tuned, and I'll let you know how long it goes. All right, so everything just kind of shut down, and it is now 11.25, so called 11.30, and uh, running the PS4 and surround sound and everything. So 
Uh, let's see, it's from five. That's six and a half hours. Not bad. Okay, so as far as the testing goes, it performed incredibly well. Uh, the inverter was actually able to maintain not only 1500 as advertised, but 17 and 1800 watts running both of those heaters through the entire life cycle of the battery for 45 minutes. That's pretty cool. So the inverter is solid. Um, build quality is great. It's like a metal casing, hardcore plastic on the top and bottom with really nice handles. Comes in at 40 pounds and it's very easy to move around with those handles. Um, let's get into some pros and cons. Um, first of all, battery chemistry, lithium ion is what is inside this unit. 500 to 800 cycles, which depending on how you use the device, it could last you a very long time. If you're using it for camping trips, power outages, emergency situations, it's gonna last you years and years because you're not gonna be using it every single day. And you're gonna have that 500 to 800 times you can use it. Um, lithium ion has a higher power density than lithium iron phosphate batteries do so inside this unit. Other comparable brands at the same size and weight are probably gonna have about a thousand watt hours inside of them using lithium iron phosphate. This guy has 1,620 watt hours inside of it because of the lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries are what's powering my laptop here and what's inside uh, so many things that we use. And they're great batteries. They work really well um, and they have a really high power density so you can have a lot more energy inside of them. Now the cycles is the only problem. If you're gonna be using this in an off-grid cabin and actually discharging it completely and filling it all the way back up every day, that's only gonna last you about a year and a half, two years because of the 500 to 800 cycles. Um, lithium iron phosphate batteries can get you up to 2,000, 3,000 cycles. Um, and so they would last many years using it every single day, but you'd have a little bit less power inside. So I'd prefer lithium iron phosphate, but to be honest, I have been enjoying all the power that's in this one box uh, without having to add any external sources. Um, a con, I wish you could add battery packs to this guy and increase that capacity, um, but you cannot. And the battery is not replaceable um, inside of it. Now for the power charging, it's great that it takes solar and it gr it's great that it comes with a 200 watt wall charger so you can charge this guy up in about eight hours. Um, I would like to see the 200 watt maximum input capacity doubled. I'd like to see 400 watts at least. That way you could charge it with solar in four hours. And um, a lot of people, depending on where you live, only get about four to six hours of good sun in a day. So I'd like to be able to charge it up in one day as opposed to eight hours where you're probably not gonna make it all the way with the solar uh, being connected. So I'd like a bigger charge controller uh, put in there, but 200 works and it works just fine. It takes about eight hours. Um, what else? I noticed this one thing on the plugs it does have three AC outlet plugs with three, uh, three holes. So if you have something with a grounding plug on it, it will fit inside this hole. However, the, the cavity for the ground is just a cavity. It doesn't have any metal connection. So it's just a hole to make sure you can plug anything into. So it's basically a two prong connection uh, across the device. Now, I don't know how these ground to the chassis uh, of the unit, but I have noticed with other solar charge controllers inside that grounding prong hole is a metal connection. So maybe they're just grounding to the chassis or what have you. I really don't claim to know how that works with grounding because the unit's not earth grounded. So I'm not sure if grounding it to the chassis helps or not, but that is something that I noticed. So I thought I would mention it. Um, Oh, and the display. The display on this unit shows you what's turned on and connected. I would love to see wattage incoming from solar and wattage outgoing to your devices. Um, so you know how much energy you're using. I had to use my own uh, display rig so that I knew how much power I was pulling out of the unit. Otherwise, you don't really know. So I'd like to see that upgraded. So those are the pros and cons. I've actually kind of enjoyed having the extra amount of power in the same weight and space of this unit. The inverter is top notch. I mean, obviously it went above and beyond the 1500 watts that was specified. Um, so, I mean, it's a really good unit, I think for a lot of people. Um, if you're gonna be using this for camping, power outages, uh, whatever, uh, this is gonna last you years and years because you're not using it every single day, full discharge, full charge. 
So this would last you a very long time and it performs very, very well. The fans are quiet, excellent build quality. Uh, you can definitely use this for appliances. This will run a refrigerator, a big double door LG like mine for 12 hours. Um, I did all those loads of laundry with it. I did three loads of laundry and it was above half, way full. I actually did two more loads. I did, up, I did five loads of laundry and it still had two bars on it. So that's impressive in an emergency situation. Um, you can run power tools with this. Absolutely. You can run any kind of power tools you want. <laughs> Look how ready this guy is to do some drilling. <laughs> they have some really funny product pictures on their website, but this will run power tools. It's a very capable unit. Um, I think this is going to be very valuable for a lot of different people to have. The price point isn't that bad. Um, pretty competitive. And with the link that I have down below saves you another 110. That makes it very interesting. So I will put that link down below if you want to go to their website. They do have other models as well. Um, little ones, bigger ones than this. They have a 2000 watt, a 1500 watt, 500 watt, and like a 300 watt uh, version of this. And so I like it. And I, I hear they're, they're coming out with more all the time and they're probably going to be taking uh, some of these concerns that I have to heart and changing up their stuff a little bit. But right now it's very, very interesting. So please go check them out if you're interested. I don't know if it's for everybody, but at least now you have more information about it. I think it's a pretty well-built unit, my opinion. Okay, well, I think that about wraps it up. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.